Jesse Phillips, uh, Olympic uh, athlete for the kayaking, came in. If you're interested in coaching, he talks about peak performance, the importance of elite sport as part of the social fabric and promoting mental health throughout the country. Um, and also he talks about how he manages himself as an elite athlete um, and someone who's competed for a number of years, over a decade at the international level, how he maintains that. Um, and then you know, you'll be able to hear things around, it's not even a question um, of you know, uh, how to be healthy, it's just a habit. And I think a lot of people listening to this conversation will just get a lot of inspiration around if you really want to uh, have an optimal health and well-being, you know, you've really got to hone in and listen to yourself. So this is for coaches, um, people who are looking at improving health outcomes for themselves, and uh, anyone who's looking for a bit of a bit of inspiration. Jesse's the guy. Jesse Phillips, Mr. Lockie Cook. Olympic athlete, London, all-round legend, actor, performer, musician. Mate, you, can, I, can I hire you oh, as well, my PR You rankings? are pretty amazing. MC. Stop it. Celebrant, no, maybe. No, I haven't no, actually. No, I've, done, I've MC'd in wed weddings, but not, no, I'm not, not qualified. To not quite there yet. Okay. No, no. Well, maybe next year. Potentially. Next year, twenty. Potentially. Things always open doors. Great. You know. Well, mate, you're looking um, quite dashing. In your Thank linen, you. Um, in your dark skin. You just come back from GP. Yep. Tell us about just, that. Just came back, well, pretty much directly from the beautiful Murray River. Just between Blanchetown and uh, Waikiri, I think it's called. That's how you pronounce it. On the Murray River. The Murray River is a beautiful there's region. There's water in of, it. it there's, there's always, I mean, there's always water in the Murray. Some places. It's just in certain places of the Murray that, you know, yeah. it gets drawn for the ag agriculture, the, it's the food bowl of Australia as it is. Um, but uh, interestingly, I, I know this is completely irrelevant, but one of my favourite films when I was a young boy was um, uh, Storm Boy. Great film. Mr. Percival, the, pe the pelican, was his friend. And um, he, and that, they, that, that was shot in the lower reaches of um, the Murray, in like the estuarine sort of waters of, um, uh, I'll, I'll think of the name, I can't quite remember what it is, but that now, nowadays is nowhere near, in terms of bird life and fish life and so forth, it's right. just like, so you remember because there's just not, a, not as much flush as, as the Murray used to have because of, and, and it's, a seri it's a serious factor for yeah, our right. country, economically, agriculturally, yeah. you know, environmentally, yeah. throughout the whole region, because yeah. it runs, obviously, it's our biggest river. The yeah. Anyway, that's by the by. I was over there coaching 30 junior Australian athletes um, with another coach from South Australia. Had 12 of my young West Australian athletes over there after a competition, as you said, the first national regatta in the Olympic um, season, the mm. 2020 season mm. for sprint kayaking. And then leading up to Tokyo. Leading up to Tokyo. Well, um, I don't know how many days now, must be like 220 maybe days until the Olympic Games. Mm. Another Olympic Games. Another. Four years goes by so fast. It's crazy, hey? When it you get does. older, it just skips. It goes fast. Yeah. Every year it's accelerating. Well, it's pretty exciting. So you just mentioned that K1 500 is a uh, Olympic selection. Election. Yes, it is. And who so won the one at GP? I did. Oh. Well, I think I might have to you buy You threw me tickets. in it. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, I look, it's, it's exciting. It's, yeah. it's exciting. I'll, look, I, I didn't expect to go in there and, and, and have, take a win, and particularly in that, well, maybe that event more than any other, to be fair, but um, I certainly didn't expect to be up at the pointy end of the field as easily as I may have mm. done so, mm. because I've been coaching so much. Um, although a couple of months ago, I did go to the World Championships um, for Australia in marathon canoeing. So I've got a bit of fitness, but I just base. don't have, uh, just, yeah. Anything I, I, over I, 20 seconds for you is usually a bit too long, isn't mate, it? Mate, it was 30 Ks. Yeah. It was about two hours and five and 20 seconds. So it was about two and a half, two, just over two hours too long. But I did train for it pretty, pretty, yeah. you know, heavily over five, four or five months. Mm. So I felt good. Mm. Um, did the Avon descent this year. Mm. Me and Stevie Bird, me and my doubles partner, Steve Bird. Agent. Took the win. Um, thanks very much. Uh, <laughs> but again, man, it was—it's. I 
since sort of coming out of retirement from being a full-time athlete pretty well in 2016, um, I've been enjoying the sport, you know. Mm. I've been able to like step back from that bubble which is high performance sport and training and travel and you know thinking about every single metric from a physical perspective yeah. and mental perspective surely um, and really like break the sport back down to what it really is about being on the water being with friends moving and then you know yeah sure having a few goals is nice it, it's not about winning you know necessarily it's about the process of going through that um, and that's what I've really been able to strip back quite a bit in the last few years. And, and, and yeah, I mean, performance is still pretty close to my best, which is strange, but it's awesome. I think it, what, hearing that and knowing what you guys were like in the lead up to London and how everything was just so um, under magnifying glass, mm -hmm. eating plants, everything, morning, sleeping habits, heart rate, heart rate, rest time, everything was monitored Sorry. to try to create peak performance. And it did, you know, you got to London, but then in the lead up to Rio mm -hmm. and these kind of things. And, and then it's really interesting in the back air, you know, as more of a mature athlete, you kind of, you have this, you have just this aura and composure about yourself. You've got this confidence, I've done that, mm. you know? It's yeah, it's definitely, so. there's definitely that. I mean, as, as, you know, it would be remiss of me to not consider my current state of vantage, um, not having had all of that experience, you know, I, you know that, that's the where maybe that sporting world wisdom has come from. For me to look back now or look forward um, and have a better perspective, as mm. we, as you hopefully would expect to, you know, moving on in life, which is cool. It's nice. I mean, everyone's like, oh, I just want to, you know, be young again and have that, you know, that vigor and rigor. <laughs> but at the end of the day, like. There's another beauty to life that you know continues to unfold as you as you age and mm. and embrace you know the things that you've learned and the people that you you know you know and you know have a deeper appreciation for the things that you do. Nice. It's nice. Yeah. Well, it, does your quote kind of flow into that a little bit? Oh, for sure. Um, so um, it's I, I don't know a hell of a lot about the man, um, but I think this quote. Um, speaks volumes in how I have considered my success to, you know, where that's, where that was born from. Um, I wasn't necessarily the most, um, you know, I didn't have the biggest VO2. I wasn't the strongest guy out there. I don't necessarily have the most athletic frame um, to be, you know, an athlete at the highest level. But what I did have was a really strong self-belief. And so Henry Ford's quote, uh, if you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. You know, I love that because there was that big poster in the wake shed mm. when we left, the, we left every morning. Yep. Yeah, and there was that someone jumping the gap. That's right, jumping the gap. Yeah, Did exactly. Did you put that up there? No, I think it must have been ramen. But, you know, like... Uh, the quotes are nice like that, you know, they, they totally, they're important to have up. I mean, some gyms obviously go crazy with them, but I think a quote here and there is nice. Uh, Particularly people that have done some pretty profound things in their, in their life and human history. Mm. You know, Henry Ford was obviously, a, you know, a major, uh, you know, has, has a major thumbprint on, on the Industrial Revolution in many ways and, you know, revolutionising automobile, yeah. you know, construction yeah. on scale. So, you know, you can't undertake anything like that. And, and look, I mean, that quote could have come from so many other people. It doesn't matter, you know, that he said it. But what it means is the important piece mm. is that, and that's maybe why I've, over years of not having gone straight into, into study, you know, in a tertiary sense, um, out of school, I went and worked and I was, I was obviously an athlete and did a lot of traveling um, uh, along with other things. I now have taken the time, or I did take the time in my sort of early mid twenties to actually discover what I wanted to study at uni. And having just graduated recently from uh, my psych, finishing my psych degree, um, it was a natural, 
process. You know, mm. it, it, it had to be what I went into because mm. the mind has always been my go-to in terms of how do I turn something around? Well, if I'm going to change my attitude, where's it going to come from? My foot? No. You know, no. The next step, yes. But it comes from your thinking patterns, yeah. your mind, you know, how you construct your reality. And so that quote, you know, is so much about backing yourself in. And that's what I've always, where it's come from, I don't know, but that's, that's what I reflect back on and going, that's what I'm almost pr most proud of, is in those clutch moments in sport. Um, that's what pulled me through, is a deep belief in bringing my best. My A game when mm. it when it counts because mm. it's hard, you know. Like oh, so many pressure. athletes out there, yeah. I remember hearing, uh, you know, you had to get whether your lifelong dream to go into the Olympics, and then the selection committee were on consistently changing the boats mm -hmm. and they said, all right, whoever is best of three, you're going to London. Yeah. And that pressure mm -hmm. and just everything, and your all the hours, mm -hmm. years of preparation come down to these. These, how long did well, the... Well, 33 seconds, so it's, yeah, I mean, three races, best of three, it could be 66 or it could be 99 seconds, roughly. 100 seconds. All up. All and up. the difference between the having it and ha not having it mm -hmm. is, you know, it yeah. literally is point, point oh 0.01. Big time. It Can is be. just, it's, it's, and then so all these little, it's not even everyone says these one percenters that you think it's even more defined than the one percent. Oh, for sure. You know, for every, sure. And then that pressure just comes up and up. And yep. I think you've got to have that, that resilient mentality that and I've always looked up to you as having that. Because, and this is what I think the beauty of downstream post elite athlete in sport comes. You don't know if you do get to the Olympics or you do get into the Australian team or the state team mm. or in the A team for your local basketball, whatever it is. Sure. As long as you're consciously aware of that journey mm -hmm. and you are being the best version of you, you will mm -hmm. reap the fruits of that, the benefits of that. Too right. And that's what I think is really powerful. We're hearing these stories around, you don't know how it will manifest into different ways, but mm. as long as you are you know, having that positive mentality, you are going to be better off and your community will be better off. Correct. As a result of that. Correct. Because I think one of the other things I think a lot of kids, you know, you, you just selflessly, you are this... You're Olympic athlete, but you're also connecting with kids at such grassroots level, mm. teaching kids how to get in the car for the first time. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think is really quite amazing about you and your character and what you do with Kinoin WA mm -hmm. and how you're willing to put your hand up. And yes, mm. I'm going to get into the, what are they, the gumpy boats? Gumpy boats, gumpy yeah. boats. Gumpy, yeah. gumpy boats. And then take the kids out and show them how to just stay balanced. And yeah. for an Olympian to go out and do that, yeah, no worries, I'll take you out. Mm. It's pretty special. Yeah, I think I've always tried to understand the whole scope. You know, I more recently, I suppose, by my, I've been building more of a professional philosophy through my uni degree. I'm sort of, you know, as a mature age student trying to cultivate, well, you know, a whole bunch of people are going to come out with degrees. Mm. But what will, you know, not, not from a, uh, not from a competitive perspective, but what, what's going to make you unique? Not so, and, and not in that market way, although, yes, that's important. Yeah. It's like, what matters to me? What's the uniqueness that I'm going to bring? Well, what, well, it has to come from my journey. It has to come from my story. And one element of that is like, okay, I need to, th I need to think globally. You know, I need to think about the whole system of sport. I need to think about, you know, grassroots all the way through to the Olympic Games or World Championships, etc. But acting locally, so think globally, act locally, mm. for me is always so important because it, it, then you then you can concertina between the you know the full spectrum, which you have to as a leader in particular in a, as a, in a leadership position, which I have been in the last several years in a, mm. in a coaching capacity. But certainly, as you say, as, a, you know, as an elite athlete, you sort of are looked upon whether you like it or not. And, and I've always liked that element mm. of, of being a role model because, as I say, I'm like, I want to lead by example. I'll bring my A game. If, if I make mistakes, I'll own up to them. And that's another part of the journey that I want to continue to um, cultivate in, in our paddling community mm. is that, sure, you're not going to have a great race. You're not going to have a great week or month 
school pressures, social pressures, all of those things aren't going to make for the ideal scenario every single time you get out there and race or train. But um, learning from examples and normalising, that's one thing, you know, that I'm really key, you know, I think is a key component is normalising what a lot of youngsters nowadays can find quite hard mm. to deal with, which then leads into high levels of anxiety and unfortunately, you know, youth suicide. Mm. It, it's, it's an awful statistic to have to deal with, but the reality is that maybe what we think for some kids who have it pretty easy, probably, you know, in our society, just need to dial back their reaction to how their life's going a little mm. bit. And that's one thing in sport, you know, it's certainly through the process of training the body and the mind, it helps to, you know, bring things into, into perspective a little bit more. It, it, it brings people into their body a little bit more. And any of those sort of out, sort of outbursts of, of reaction, whether emotional or physical through injury or sickness or so, it's just like, okay, that's normal because mm. of all these other factors in your life. Mm. And having a network, I mean, the sporting environment and community is a very, can be, and often is, I think, in the Australian context, a very, um, uh, well, nourishing, sort of supportive environment. People, I'd hope to think that most people don't fall through the cracks in those types of, like, sporting clubs, surf mm. life saving, you know, the kite community, certainly. Mm. We, we try to make sure that everyone's good, mm. you know, and, and isn't being mm. left out to the side mm. and, and isn't being listened to. Um, though I know in so many parts of Australia and, and our, our communities, you know, in the metro area as well, there'd be a lot of kids without that support. It is really interesting that point though as well, because I've also heard on the flip side of that, elite mm. sport. Mm -hmm. You've got elite sport and then community sport, like a surf life saving club yep. that can be elite in its own world, but like majority of people are doing it to be part of the community Correct. and con contribute. But it's interesting, I caught up with Lisa Russ. Yeah, just right. Three days ago in Broome. Oh, brilliant. And it was really yeah, interesting. Nice. So she was a silver medalist. And uh, bronze bronze in, medalist in Beijing. In yep. And Beijing. Yep. And she competed in Athens as well. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And uh, she lives in Derby now. Mm -hmm. You know, all of a sudden, so if you go kayaking there, you get in by croc. Yeah. So it's, you know, she it's, <laughs> doesn't get kayaking at all. That's right. Um, it was interesting just talking to her about her journey as, you know, mm. as the top. She's been to Olympics. Yep. Amazing. And then, you know, it was interesting my journey. Not, I didn't compete or anything like that, but post elite sport and where things were all of a sudden you're not at my level you're not in like uh in the australian senior team but you're still giving you as much hours into Top. it yeah. and then all of a sudden you're not in the program you got injury and you're out and then now what's that transition back in and it's mm. interesting more people i talk about it that like non um you know that phase when they get out of the system what is all of a sudden that's their tribe it's your community yeah and you stay part of that but all of a sudden you're not in that. You're not, you're not in, in the it. squad. Yeah. You're not in the waste squad. You're not in the AAS. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, oh, what's it then? Mm. You know? Who it's do you on. fit with? And yeah. it's quite interesting on that mental health thing. I feel the institutes are doing it better, but there's still a lot. You know, AFL, for example, you've got um, people who are 25 years old or 22 years old retiring yeah. because the pressure's wow. so high. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, I think I in, the, in the, the community that you've kind of contributed to, like, mm. you get someone like a Ram and Anderson. Mm -hmm. You know, he's just mm -hmm. such a lovely person, yeah. but also a hard person. Yeah, he, he's, he's certainly been, over the last several, you know, well, decade, two decades that I've known him, has been, you know, finding that balance mm. between elite sport and wellness and community. Yeah. And you're exactly right. I mean, I think our, our particular case, you know, knowing, you know, your journey as well, you know, you're right, you know, priming yourself to be at the top of your game quite equally to, to some of us in the squad that were, you know, maybe a few years older and, you know, in, into the senior team ranks. But by no means was it ever seen, you know, outside of the performance realm as you not being part of our... Like, there was never... And that's, that's, what, I, that's what I'm sort of talking mm. to in that, like, we try and normalise. Normalise, like, performance as well as normalising, um, you know the grievances and what have you of a of, of variety of athletes, you mm. know, over time, whatever the, whatever you've grievance or, or, you know, 
downturn or, or feelings of whatever. Yeah, um, well-being. Well-being. Yeah. Um, are it's making sure that they've got support around yeah. them. And, yeah. and, you know, we've been, you know, mates, irrespective of the p sport, you yeah. know, the, the sporting journey. And, and likewise with, you know, Bouch, Toddy, or, you know, you name it, Steve-O, Reese, you know, we're all buddies that will catch up irrespective mm. whether we're around a, a, mm. a kayak or a ski or a, or a paddle. paddle. So it is so important, man. Yeah. Connection is so important. Yeah. And, and it's not just about that one thing, this is where, you know, people connecting deeply. Mm. And I think it's a nice little segue into this, mm. mate. Your iron. Yep. You did make a private, or like a... I did. We don't need this to go in the details, but if you're not willing to share, you don't interested to share that? Uh, no, look, I mean, it was, it was a bit of a, it was a sort of run through of what, you know, I may, I may be sort of cultivating a little um, performance goal in the next few months towards yep. The Olympic trials after you know having a pretty successful little outing in, in Adelaide a couple of weekends ago so that you know will, will be balanced out I mean all of the sort of high performance metrics about performance based stuff so sleep nutrition recovery um, mindset and um, I suppose you know vigor that that sort of grit and ability to like just push through um, you know mindfulness and, and sort of bringing myself out of it that recovery um, so they're all of my my sort of uh, my pieces of my pie um, that I'll be putting together in my my performance I am so you created a new title and that's what you did yep so do you see yourself how often would you check in on that uh, look I'll, I'll certainly be checking in on <coughs> every couple of days now mm. um, so just to see just to map out where I'll, I'll probably invite a couple of people in with it, um, just to just to give me that accountability. I think that's so important. Um, even though I, you know it's not maybe the nuts and the bolts of how I'm going to do it, mm. it's just having those conversations about well, why 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 might, might this be tapping off a little bit here? Yeah, why am I rating down at five or three or two in the sleep department? You know that's not. Mm. the coming of that goal is it you know mm. so you know i think i'll probably get steve on board um to have a look over it for me and keep me on track long time Man doubles now. partner yeah that's it um you two are the best duo <laughs> we've we've yeah we've uh, we've enjoyed a, a healthy partnership <laughs> and friendship you know partnership in, in on and off the water as we, yeah. as we say so totally yeah um so let's have a bit of a yarn about this yeah so yep. talk to me about, you've got two, you know, real strengths here and three as well. Um, mm. Health, growth, contribution, they're yeah. some of your strongest areas. Yeah, I mean health, I'm always, you know, touch wood, I'm, I, I feel always pretty in touch with that. I think from that athletic training base, you know, when you've got been to the elite level of sport, you sort of, you, you're so, you know, your lens is zoomed in on that stuff most days even when you've finished up. And I, I suppose I've done it for so long, that accumulation of knowledge and, and just, you can't, you just can't let it go. And, you know, chatting about it on the weekend, actually, I down, down south for a friend's wedding and, and speaking about it on the way home where, you know, some of our friends, you know, like to get on, on, the, uh, on, the, uh, on the beers and the wines and, and sort of push into the night where it's just automatic for me. Like, as soon as I start feeling tired, there's no like, I'll just have another one. It's like, all right, it's time to shut down. You know, like, yeah. I, and it becomes so ingrained and, and it might sound a bit boring. I mean, you know, you have a good, a good dance and a good time, but like all within the energy reserves and the resources that you have. Mm. I think that's one thing is you just, I listen to my body really well now. Um, so that's why my health is sort of right up there. Um, the contribution side of thing, you know, I, it's a hard one. I'd, I'd love to contribute more. I think that the amount of time I spend in, in sport from a contributive sort of state is pretty high. And just managing so many athletes, I think that con level of contribution is, is, is almost, you know, outreaches beyond, mm. you know, very much beyond just my sort of small circle, potentially to the detriment of, of you know, you know, some friends and some, and some family, but 
I think the, you know the, there's a few, fair few numbers that I'm contributing to there and, and their goals and dreams in, in sport particularly. And they're all the um, intangible things like those one liners. One liners. You know, the, the, little, the, the small questions things. that you know absolutely you know the way that people respond to you you know when you flick through a text or you flick through a you know messenger about you know what can i do here should i do this da, 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 da. like just one one element of that you know from a coaching sort of standpoint or philosophy is like I always try and push the question back to the athlete if there's a question that comes at me that is you know pretty factual you know i i'm always trying to give them the opportunity to res, you know to, to ensure that they've got the resources around them to, to, to answer that question or if it's something that they are you know advice about something that they might you know be you know deciding upon you throw questions back at people mm. just to make them think deeper just mm. just just drill down a little bit mm. further mm. and you've all we've all got the answers inside of us in a way just the guidance that you know particularly that adolescent age that i think most people some people need can you see yourself using something like this to help you go and ask those questions going a bit deeper yeah i think so for sure and and particularly in the teenage elite athlete pathway there's so many competing um focal points in their life and it's something that i've been chatting to Steve about recently and you know being the sports development officer at North Cod is that you know I'm I'm asking him questions about some of his athletes and and you know to try and find that marriage between asking too much of athletes at a certain time in their development you know from a sporting long-term athlete development perspective but in you know, in line with what's happening in their life right now, the social pressures at school, you know, the hormones that are changing in, in young people's bodies, likely, you know, trying to keep up socially on the weekend, that plus doing, you know, five, six, seven, eight sessions a week mm. in any sporting discipline mm. that they're doing, it would really make it easier to have a, a clear cut directive mm -hmm. towards areas of you know ebb and flow for them which is where I, I think I young would would work really well because some of them don't communicate that well mm -hmm. but that speaks volumes doesn't it yeah you know and and they're able to feel comfortable in their own time to answer these questions yeah so utilizing that technology and that you know that that sort of operating system which is so accessible on the phone nowadays it's just like you mm. we've got to be, be wise with it um, yeah I, I'm, I'm excited to, to see how this might work with some young athletes definitely yeah so you've got this here and then this one here is we want to talk about anything else well yeah I mean you can probably see there that like my family's pretty low um, it's it's sort of you know five there and 5.1 Drag my average down, baby. Um, time. I mean, it, I, 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 you know, it probably would be be higher than that if I really, you know, considered it in line with all the other priorities and commitments. But it's still, you know, it's still. I feel that. I feel that five, or you know, that that rating, being where it is, because. You know, I just always want more time with my family. Whenever I have time with my family, it's always it brings joy. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but uh, travel, work, not just for me, them. <laughs> you know, there I've got a, you know my one of my nephews and my brother-in-laws in Japan at the moment. I've been over in Adelaide recently. You know, the, the school period. My young sister just finished graduated school at, down at Wardoff um, Bibber Lake, um, West Coast Steiner. Um, you know, trying to fit everything is tough. Yeah. But you do your best, yeah. um, and I know that you know that, that that will come up in a few weeks' time once we've had a bit more time over the holiday period. Totally. You know, yeah. But um, everything else is in good spirit, man. I mean, as you can see, it like I'm I'm, I'm tracking all right right now. Uh, there's a, a couple areas to top up, but I think in the key areas of health, which I think is just absolutely that that for me is 
ground zero, you got to have that foundation. You know, I think having a level of vitality to start with gives you energy to start to top up other 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 areas of your life. So with this, if there was one area that you could maybe um, increase by a decimal or something like that, mm. which would increase the aggregate, what mm. would it be over the next few months? Well, I, I mean, certainly family that that'll that'll jump up. Um, I think a better a better work balance will, you know, I mean, it's high-ish at the moment, but I think it can, you know, we can we can find some some points there. Um, and that's just about prioritising. For me, I'm pretty good at saying yes, and I'm learning to say no. <laughs> I say yes to the right, I'm trying to say yes to the right things. We made the right decision coming here. I did, and you, I, I, I always say yes to you, <laughs> you know that. Um, so yeah, no, but I'm, I'm tracking it pretty well. I mean, I'd like a little bit more beach time. Um, I'd like a little bit more Alana time. Um, you know, we, you know, she's busy, uh, we're ships in the night a lot of the time. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. It's cra You live in the same One house. One thing that we didn't check is like, you know, romance. Yeah, relationship. relationship. Yeah, yeah, your strongest know. relationship. So, yeah. Yeah, oh, it, I it's think it's, yeah, and, and, and it's such an important piece, yeah. to be honest, because, you know, for, for many people who live with their partner, you recover, you rejuvenate, you re-energise at mm. home. And if that space isn't strong and vibing and, you know, have that element of, like, breathing out, then all of those other things are going to be affected by that one, Yeah, I think. More, you, know, and, and, you know, sleep, health, all of those bits and pieces will start to get just eaten away by the fact that that relationship, that really bedrock relationship in your life, is, is yeah, is questionable. But no, if that was on the list, I think we'd be, we'd probably be pretty high at the moment. I'd be, we'd be well and truly above eight, eight and a half, which is good. Oh, definitely. <laughs> good on you, man. Pleasure, bro. Oh, Thanks so for having good. Me. Really appreciate it. And uh, all the best for this Great next yarn. journey. Thanks, good mate. Good yarn. Real good yarn. And uh, we'll yarn again soon. Down straight, we will. Deadly.